This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. A mother has died in a car crash just after dropping her child off at school this morning in the Derwent Valley. Police believe she may have hit a patch of black ice on a notorious road, sending her out-of-control car into the path of a truck. Two vehicles in a twisted mess on Glenora Road at Plenty. A car crushed in half by an unladen milk tanker at 8.30 this morning. This, a devastating end to a mother's morning school run. She's a local from Gretna who just dropped her um, nine-year-old daughter off at school. Crash investigators believe dangerously cold conditions that gripped many parts of the state this morning contributed. I can see one. Police say the car may have hit a large patch of black ice, completely losing traction and sliding into the path of an oncoming truck. The, the prevalence of the black ice and the, um, the lane the Commodore was travelling in was quite high with the proximity of the road barrier shading the roads. Volunteer fire and SES crews were the first to arrive here on scene. They provided immediate medical care to the driver of the car, but despite their best efforts, they couldn't save her life and they've um, provided immediate first aid, performed for, um, CPR on this lady for over 30 minutes, doing everything they can to try and um, help her survive the crash. And unfortunately on this occasion, uh, it was just beyond their control. Police reiterating how dangerous cold conditions can be as officers were left with the task of notifying family. We've been in contact with the local school and fortunately they have um, uh, psychologists on site today and we've, with the next of kin notification we're organising for all the support for her nine-year-old daughter today. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Meanwhile, a 62-year-old woman remains in a critical condition in the Northwest Regional Hospital tonight after being involved in a serious single vehicle crash at 4th late yesterday. The 58-year-old male passenger in the vehicle did not sustain injuries. The collision brought down power lines to Kindred Road with the stretch closed for several hours. The cause of the crash is still being investigated. A Tasmanian prisoner who died in the back of an escort van was not correctly supervised, according to a Hobart coroner. The findings into three deaths in custody were handed down this afternoon, with one death ruled to be a failure on the part of officers. Coroner Simon Cooper handing down today's findings following a coronial inquest into three deaths in custody over six weeks in 2015. Troy Colin Monson, Robin Michael and Scott Clifford Mitchell all died while they were in the care of the Tasmanian Prison Service. At this time we'd like to extend our condolences to the families of all those that are affected by this, these events. And uh, lastly, we would continue with our support and our um, insurance that staff that have been affected by these events, where we will support them through. The coroner's report highly critical that Troy Monson's suicidal tendencies were passed on to a police officer but were ignored. No assessment in relation to suicide or self-harm was conducted within two hours of Mr Monson entering custody, contrary to prison guidelines. The report states that the death of Mr Monson, who died while being transported in a police van from Launceston Reception Prison to Hobart's Risdon Prison, was due to a lack of care and supervision. The decision to transport the prisoner onto Hobart is said to be a poor one and no steps were taken to ensure his safety or to monitor him at all during the escort. There are 18 recommendations in the report, including further training on processing inmates, appropriate staff for risk intervention teams, the establishment of a specialist escort unit and more training for new and current nursing staff. Robin Michael and Scott Clifford Mitchell were found to have been appropriately cared for whilst in custody. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. And if you need help or support, there are services available. Lifeline can be contacted 24 hours a day. Strict regulations around short-stay accommodation will ease from tomorrow as the state government's sharing economy kicks into gear. But there are concerns it will put more pressure on an already stressed market, which could drive up rental prices. Relaxing the rules around short-stay accommodation, allowing Tasmanian homeowners to sink their teeth into booming tourist numbers. That is fantastic. The government's sharing economy starts tomorrow. Those wanting to lease up to four bedrooms no longer requiring a permit. 
if it's more than four bedrooms or it's a shack or an investment property, there'll be a simple one-step permit application form. Elizabeth Poland listed her home on Airbnb 12 months ago and says the process was tedious and expensive. It costs quite a significant amount of money, up to about $1,000, including the building surveyor. In respect of the basic safety requirements, um, people will need to self-assess and, and sign a statutory declaration that they've done so. But it's got some offside as the rental squeeze in Hobart leaves just 0.6% vacancy rates. If you squeeze out the renters and take out students out of Sandy Bay and people out of Battery Point, you actually end up with not a true tourist experience, you end up with a tourist village. Fears it'll create even further pressure on those seeking affordable housing as a busy market threatens rental prices. We already have too many people sleeping rough in Tasmania. We have already too many people who are spending far too much of their income on their rental. Uh, we don't want to see those pressure points increased. Labor members en route to the party's Georgetown conference with a challenge on East Coast fish farming. We hope that this weekend at Labor's state conference there's a shift in the party's position which to date has been to back in the industry and the Liberals every step of the way. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. The Legislative Council has moved to form a subcommittee aiming to inquire into the capacity of Tasmania's main hospitals to improve patient outcomes. The committee will look at current and projected demand on the state's acute health services and the adequacy of funding from both state and federal governments. It will also inquire into the level of engagement with the private sector in delivering health services. The Environment Protection Authority has tonight approved major Tasmanian salmon producer Tassel to implement a waste collection system in Macquarie Harbour. It says it will regularly review the operation which will now allow the company to farm more salmon in the area. In a statement, Tassel said it is committed to maintaining sustainable operations and no waste will be discharged into the harbour. The approval comes after intense debate over whether the system was suitable to be trialled in a World Heritage Site. Shocking vision has emerged of the moment police were forced to tackle a man to the ground in a car park in Devonport. Multiple officers were called in using batons to get the man out of the vehicle and onto the ground. Two officers were injured during the incident where the man allegedly drove his vehicle at two police cars. The 23-year-old Bernie man was later arrested and taken into police custody. It's understood police had been attempting to arrest the man who is a person of interest in outstanding family violence matters. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. Young Tasmanians are being offered a unique opportunity to improve their employment potential through a new initiative launched today. The Impact Community Project is targeting 15 to 24 year olds, giving young people new skills and experiences to help move into the workforce. The young people will be involved in designing and producing products and services which will be for sale to the general public, but through that they also gain experience in IT, in design, in product design and so a whole lot of different tasters into the world of work. The initiative has been federally funded for two years with each youth given six months of assistance. Two best mates are on an epic journey to run seven marathons in seven days. It's all in the name of raising money for child abuse prevention charity Bravehearts. This run along Hobart's Derwent River is one leg of an extraordinary journey, one that's close to the heart of Jimmy Morrison. Basically, um, as a survivor of child sexual abuse and uh, a lover of running, I was fortunate enough to stumble across a website that uh, Bravehearts runs. The Queenslander and his best mate of 16 years, Ben, have committed to running a marathon a day for seven days to raise awareness for the child protection organisation Bravehearts. There's a presence everyone's running with, so you, you don't have to talk, you don't have to you communicate. It's just like a little acknowledgement as you run past, and uh, that there is there'd be no no counselling in this world that could uh, accommodate on that level. There's definitely a big focus on the message and the reason we're here, and it's whilst we're running marathons, that's certainly second to the to the cause. 26 runners are travelling to seven cities around the country to participate in what's being called Australia's biggest charity race.
making Australia the safest place to raise our children really resonated with me. And then being able to run seven days in a row is a good bonus. You see them get up every morning at four o'clock to get ready after they've just done one marathon to, to run another. Um, it's pretty incredible. The journey is part of a larger mission for the charity, with organisers hoping to raise $300,000 to fund educational sessions for Australian primary schools. The trip will finish at the Gold Coast Marathon on Sunday. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Many of us don't need an excuse to act like clowns, but Red Nose Day is certainly a good one. Hundreds of Tasmanians popped on a nose today and volunteered at shopping centres across the state, aiming to raise funds to prevent sudden infant death syndrome. Zero. It's a simple wiggle jiggle, but with a serious message. Every year in Australia, 3,200 babies and children die suddenly and unexpectedly. That's nine deaths per day. This year, volunteers around the country have manned booths, selling pens, toys, pins and, of course, red noses, aiming to put an end to SIDS. It's a cause close to Joanne Nevin's heart. When my daughter was born 35 years ago, um, the lady in the room next to my room, she lost a baby six weeks later. We'd been to visit the day before and then I got a phone call the next morning to say her baby had passed in the night for no apparent reason. And so it was always in the back of my mind. And nearly 20 years on, Joanne is still an eager volunteer, motivated to ensure new parents know the best way to lay their babies to sleep. It's such an important thing. People take their new baby home, they want their baby for life, you know, and if they can find a way that they can help with the research to find out what is the cause, that's what we're here for. Even our politicians got into the day's cause. It's hoped across Australia $100,000 will be raised, going towards safe sleeping education and research. Jessica Moran, Southern Cross News. A 12-year-old who's been growing his rat tail almost his entire life has chopped it off for charity. Jordan Milmot's beloved hairstyle began back in kindergarten, the rat tail growing as long as a ruler. But today, it came off. The grade six Gagebrook Primary School student raised more than $1,000 for Give Me Five for Kids. I told my mum that I wanted to get it chopped off and then we went to school and told people and they wanted to, like, do stuff for it? I think it sends out the, a great message that Jordan's willing to help others um, and raise money for such a good cause and a cause that, that helps children. Jordan's teachers say he's a role model for other students at the school. Now a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to Tazplan, your local super fund. The Australian share market has fallen sharply amid profit taking and a weak overseas lead on the last day of the financial year. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 96.6 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 76.91 US cents and 67.24 euro cents. Now to the TSL and Devonport, coming off a breakthrough win, faces the might of Premiership favourite Clarence. The job made even harder as the Roos welcome back Jordan Roberts, adding more firepower to one of the strongest midfields in the league. Only percentage is holding Clarence off the top of the ladder. That could change if the side gets a run on against Devonport at Blunston Arena. A tough, hard, contested brand of footy and getting the ball forward and locking it in there, which we try and do every weekend. So. Um, you know, we won't discuss percentage at all this week. Jeremy Webberley is still four to six weeks away from returning after a hamstring injury. His ranks are bolstered in the meantime by a big inclusion. Jordan Roberts will play his first game in two and a half years. So the last game he played was the prelim final in 2014. So he's had two knee reconstructions. They face a side on the move. Devonport coach Mitch Thorpe says his troops have been more confident on the track after notching up a win over Burnie last round. The biggest confidence we got was out of Glenorchy the week before. Um, just being able to you know, play four quarters of footy and be in the game. and um, That's why I think we bounced into this week um, with, a, with a bit of confidence. It's likely the game will be won and lost in the midfield. Yeah, Brad Simmons will come back from suspension, which is good. Um, tough inside midfielder, gives a bit of grunt. Meanwhile, Hobart City Demons tackled the Dockers at West Park. 
It's a tough game, despite Bernie's results. They're a different beast up at West Park. Their top end is still top end. McKenna, Proctor, the Walters boys, Rudy Barrett. So, you know, we've got our work cut out for us travelling as well. A win will put Hobart City Demons well within finals contention. High stakes in the NPL this weekend. South Hobart and Devonport will clash for top spot on the table. One point separates the pair as we pass the halfway mark of the season. South Hobart is in solid form, entering the match with a seven-game winning streak. Yeah, I mean, they're always tough to break down. They, they defend well as a team and uh, they've got a real team structure about them. So, uh, yeah, it'll be tough to break them down, but uh, we think we've got the quality in our team to be able to do that. Kickoff is 2 o'clock tomorrow at Darcy Street. The Launceston Tornadoes will be under new captaincy this weekend as they prepare to take on Geelong at home. Lauren Mansfield is still away on Opal's duties, providing an opportunity for player Taylor Roberts to step up as interim captain. I'm really enjoying it. I'm liking taking on the role. Um, and I mean, the girls are easy to kind of work with, so it's really, it's not a hard job at all. The side is expecting a strong physical clash with Geelong, but Roberts says the home ground support will work in their favour. They're a really tough team, they work really hard, they play really well together, they've had a core group together for a while now. I think they'll press us and kind of try and make us feel a little bit flustered, but um, I think if we can stay composed, stick to the scout, I think hopefully we should be fine. Tip-off is 6.30 on Saturday night. And to finish off tonight, a member of the AFL's Indigenous Team of the Century has spoken about life and football to Tasmanian footy fanatics at a special school clinic. Daryl White, who made his name with the Brisbane Lions, will play in a local league's Aboriginal round tomorrow. Who's here? Still a towering figure out on the field, Daryl White delivered pointers to the next generation of stars. Now, at the end of the day, they want to learn, and if they're having fun learning, you know, you get a lot more out of it. His wisdom referencing his own battles with homesickness and keeping a sound work ethic. From a tough upbringing in Alice Springs, White played in three flags with the Brisbane Lions during a 13-year career. It all started from his first goal at AFL level, which went on to become goal of the year. Picked it up now, eluded one player, shoots it towards goal. There is a magical piece of football. Look, they're getting better, quicker, faster, bigger. I was, you know, I was a key defender. I'd be a ruck rover now, so I wish I had my time again. Today's session precedes the Northern Tasmanian Football Association's Aboriginal Round, where White will play for Rochalee against Stella Rain. They've embraced it. They have a great uh, turnout for the day. And in case you were wondering, he'll be wearing his trademark long sleeves. You know, they go, oh, we'll do this and that for you and we'll pay in this. I said, look, mate, as long as you've got a number 17 long sleeve, I'll be right. The match begins at 2.30 tomorrow. Good evening, Hobart, 10 degrees today. Launceston, not minus four, but just minus two. But stand by, it might be minus four tomorrow. 11 degrees, the top there. Burnie, 11, and Devonport, 11 as well. 12, the high, that was at Eddiston Point, but most temperatures between two and five below average. Mount Bob's recorded 12 mils of rain today to top that list. King Island and Wynyard, 11 degrees. Flinders Island, Low Head, Friendly Beaches, and Helens, Ooze and Strawn, all 10. Grove, nine today. Lyre Weenie, a range of minus three to a high of two. There is a band of high cloud. That's linking northern Queensland all the way to New Zealand. A cold front has moved in behind that system and another front containing thunderstorms is entering the bite. Close up and low level cloud over the state today, mainly over the west and south, but most of the state copped a little bit. Tomorrow, the high starts to dominate proceedings over the nation. The cold front crosses the bite. Winds from the northwest at 10 to 20 knots, reaching 25 knots in the west later, swells to three metres. A road weather alert for black ice has once again been issued for the entire state. Be careful on the roads. Forecast for tomorrow, Hobart, a top of 10 after a cold night, minus 1 for Medina, 9 the high and 8 the top for Oatlands after minus 5. Launceston heading for minus 4 again, might reach it. 10 degrees in the afternoon, Devonport cloud increasing, 11 degrees and Liawini minus 7 not minus five, a top of positive five. For Burnie tomorrow, cloud increasing, 13 the top, 13 for Strawn, Marawar 12, while for the east, 
A sunny day, 13 for St Helens and Swansea, 11 for Orford, but all quite chilly. On Sunday, widespread frosts and valley fog, but a mainly fine day. Showers developing over the north on Monday morning, extending statewide during the afternoon, and showers contracting from the east on Tuesday, but continuing elsewhere. Showers in Perth tomorrow, sunny in Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane, and frosty starts for Canberra and Alice Springs. Conditions clear but cold. Five degrees in Hobart, Launceston three at the moment and three degrees in Devonport. The ski season hasn't kicked off yet, Joe, but there's plenty of white stuff around. Oh, there certainly is, Murph. My word, there is. And just before we leave you tonight, talking of snow, it's of course expected to come over many parts of the state over the weekend and Cradle Mountain is proving to be one of the first to see that light snow. Take a look at this Tassie devil. He certainly didn't seem to mind the sprinkling. This very cute video has become the latest internet hit. Posted online late yesterday by Devils at Cradle, it's now been viewed almost 300,000 times. Perfect. That's all from the news team for now. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.